All right. I'm used to the disclaimer uh, when I work for the state that would always have to say, like, you're going to be recorded. If if you don't want to be, you got to leave the call. Uh, so uh, anyhow, uh, my first uh, uh, note here is my slides are not what I would call pretty. I don't have a whole lot of pictures, but don't worry, because this call will evolve. So over time, I'll have more pictures to throw in here that are relevant. So um, this uh, should be continually getting better as time goes on. Um, but I, I did want to uh, just briefly go over the agenda. And there are a couple of topics that I think are going to take a little bit of time. So uh, I'm going to make it as brief as possible. So that way we have the time to devote to the, the topics that I think we'll uh, get a lot of questions about. Uh, so first, uh, I want to cover what the what the chapter staff are are working on regarding energy, uh, just as, as a, a brief update. But then I think more importantly is um, where the gaps are, uh, what what we're not actually working on, but is still important because uh, I, I look at that as opportunities for uh, you know potential involvement. Uh, we have the legislative hot topics where I think we'll spend quite a bit of time maybe. Uh, oh, I forgot to delete it there. Uh, Tom unfortunately has a conflict, can't can't make it, so we don't have a message from Tom, although he did say hi, so I guess we have that message. Uh, and then we're uh, going to request some feedback of what you all want to see in these quarterly meetings. Uh, some uh, A brief summary from each of the teams and... Uh, my hopes there are some people only go to one one team uh, meeting or call, and so uh, well, we can all hear what the other teams are involved in, maybe pique your interest and, and make you want to uh, be involved in another team. Uh, and then opportunities for uh, volunteer activity. And then I, I think Jim is going to uh, talk a little bit about a, a new team. And then the that last one, the next energy and climate meeting, that's very... Uh, uh, very sparse. <laughs> I, I I have yet to develop any ideas with that yet. So we're hoping to really get some good feedback today. Uh, ne next slide, please. All right. And this, this first slide is basically what I'm working on. The next slide, uh, uh, Kelsey can, can speak to, uh, you know, about her own work here. Uh, but uh, first I, I work with the building electrification, and I, I guess one one way I, I should have put it in a different uh, order. But anyhow, uh, building electrification, and that that can involve a, a lot of different aspects. And one thing I like about building electrification is that uh, it's now overlapping with clean transportation because we're talking about uh, uh, how do you ensure new buildings. Uh, when you're looking at the the codes and everything, uh, how do you ensure uh, new buildings are ready for um, EV infrastructure? So that, that's pretty interesting. Uh, I, I always like it when areas overlap. Uh, right now, I'm uh, also working on the uh, Public Utility Commission. They, they have a lot of announcements open for comment period and everything. So uh, that their energy efficiency program act what, what 129 uh, they're they're revising their technical reference manual for energy efficiency so um i'm hoping to become familiar with that so that way uh, uh, we can provide some meaningful comments if appropriate and then part of the uh, community advocates program since they uh, are all about advancing the the ira uh, and iija or bil funds, the federal funds coming into the state. Uh, the Home Energy Rebates Program is one of those programs that DEP implements it and it's federally funded. So we're hoping to be able to provide some meaningful feedback to DEP about how to design a, a functional program that, that meets our goals. Uh, the Clean Transportation for All, that, that's kind of a, to me, it's a tricky one. Uh, my priority is the Advanced Clean Trucks Rule. Uh, but I'm also working on heavy-duty omnibus and just trying to keep my finger on the pulse when it comes to uh, what PennDOT's doing and what DEP uh, is doing when it comes to uh, promoting clean transportation. 
but the advanced clean trucks rule is by far my priority. And when I say that, I look at that as being that all those other areas are potential areas of, uh, of future volunteer engagement, especially when they have uh, public meetings, which uh, I, I hope to be able to put that information out when that's available. And the, the last one is clean energy. And uh, right now, community solar, uh, I'm going to talk about legislative stuff later on, but community solar is a, a big part of uh, my time right now. The alternative energy portfolio standards, but now you'll see it is uh, being called something else in Reggie, which might also be uh, called something else. We'll, we'll see in the very near future, uh, maybe. And the one thing I did not put on here, because I did it by topic, is the, the community advocates program. And that actually gives me a little bit more flexibility that even though I have defined priorities with these topics, uh, working with the community advocates program, I can still uh, at least uh, be involved in, in some of the other uh, topics that I would consider gaps, uh, but they're gaps that will be filled. So, all right, now, next slide, please. All right, Kelsey, you're up. Yeah, hi, y'all. Some of the really big things that um, I've been working on over the last uh, few years are fighting a lot of the dirty gas export projects. So we were involved in a number of um, legal situations that were dealing with pipeline expansion projects or liquefied uh, fracked gas facilities or, or LNG um, facilities. So um, one of those would be y the y Lucing project, and then the other is the Penn Energy project. And while some of these, um, the Regional Energy Access Expansion Pipeline Project is actually in their oral arguments tomorrow for the case moving forward. So we're still fighting that fight. Um, but the LNG projects right now are also impacted by the Biden LNG pause. So there's not as much that's moving directly right now, but both of the projects listed there have not been um, abandoned by their developers. So even though the pause is impacting them, we have not heard cancellations from either of those, um, either of the companies and the groups involved in those projects. So we'll still be fighting and still be working on LNG issues, um, which most both of those projects that are right there listed are on the eastern side of the state. So folks, um, just uh, a little bit out of my uh, Western PA wheelhouse. So um, if folks are interested in those projects or interested in um, working on these kinds of things or already doing something, I would really love to connect um, because there is stuff that um, maybe other groups have um, other partner environmental organizations have been doing that I'd love to connect to you on um, and just hear hear some of that kind of conversation and also just get to know you. Um, Nate kind of mentioned some of the federal funds that have been um, impacting some of the programs. And so um, we have been able to start addressing some of the backlog of our uh, legacy well problem in Pennsylvania because of these. However, there is um, some issues with just how certain how certain how the programming has been rolled out. And we get to also share and comment on things we'd like to see in the future rounds of funding. So there's been a very large um, gap of plugging wells that actually have the largest sort of methane coming out of them, as well as some of the priority wells that we've seen be close to structures. And then another big piece of the work that I've been doing is addressing policy loopholes and regulatory rulemakings. There's been, I know a number of folks here on this call have been involved in some of the methane rules moving forward. Um, we are also working on hazardous fracking waste um, and those loopholes that govern how that um, is addressed in the state. Um, one of the biggest campaigns that I've worked on is low oil and gas well bond amounts. And so this really is such a huge policy gap in Pennsylvania that allows for operators of oil and gas wells to abandon their wells back to the state to take care of and clean up. Um, so that's been a huge uh, part of my work over the last few years. And then there are some upcoming rulemakings that have been announced recently by the Shapiro administration that we'll likely see um, later in the year um, or potentially um, into next. So we'll be putting some pressure on that and making sure that those rules coming out um, are are up to what we would what we would want. There's a couple of resources there and my emails there, but yeah, I'm really um, this is kind of the major um, three buckets of work that I've been doing 
over the last um, few years here. We can go ahead, I think, and I'm switching to whoever is up next. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And this, uh, the, this, well, this is both of us again. Uh, right now, the, the gaps that I identified are, are only, uh, we'll say the clean energy related, but you may know some, uh, some gaps that, uh, that may, that maybe you're not working on, but are still important that, that might be of interest. But, uh, right now, again, since I mentioned that the advanced clean trucks rule is, uh, my priority, uh, it doesn't mean that everything else is, is not important. So the EPA vehicle emission standards, you know, that, that there's a lot happening right now uh, that I, I just uh, unfortunately don't have the time uh, to directly work on. Uh, but I, I think that's definitely uh, an opportunity for uh, uh, being active and uh, Depending on you know what whether there's comment periods or uh, voting on on different bills, you know opportunities to uh, express our opinions. Uh, the uh, EV infrastructure uh, building codes is is another where uh, very very important. Uh, there there have been uh, informational hearings uh, about that topic, but to date. If I'm correct, no, no voting uh, on any of that. But again, a, a potential opportunity to to have our voices heard. Uh, and I already mentioned the the Public Utility Commission. Uh, they have their uh, comments, comment periods. Well, they will have a comment period for uh, their their revised technical reference manual. Uh, but they they have a lot of notices that come out. So any anything that's uh, energy uh, building electrification or energy efficiency related, I'll make sure to get that information relayed. So that way, uh, if if we choose to, you know, we, we can we can definitely be involved. Uh, Kelsey, did you have any anything that to add there? I think just kind of even thinking back to the slide that I was sharing for my stuff that I've been working on, um, some of those major gas infrastructure projects, particularly LNG issues, again, I just think there's so much expertise from folks who are living closer to where these projects are proposed and also some much more coordination that could be going on um, amongst myself as staff and folks who are already working on some of these things. So I think if you are already involved in any of the any infrastructure fights or any sort of gas particular related work um, and you aren't talking to me, I think I would just really love for us to be coordinating and um, you sharing some of that um, and we can get deeper. Um, I think that that's mainly where I saw um, some of the work going, um, but if there's any feedback or questions, I could, I could try to answer that too. All right, I think we can move on to the next slide then. We're getting um, close to the, oh, go ahead. Yeah, maybe this is a good time to pause and see if there's any questions about uh, stuff staff is working on or not. Sure, yeah. Okay, maybe not. All right, well, we can move forward then. And uh, uh, if, if you don't want to be heard on, you know, uh, with, you know, with with this being recorded, you know, feel free to to put any questions or comments in the chat. In fact, when we get to the feedback session, I I, I would encourage uh, using the chat. Um, this is where I, I think that we'll probably run, run into some questions. But uh, uh, right now, there there's so much going on in the, the legislative world with with energy. Uh, so we have uh, community solar, which we did write a testimony for for one of their hearings uh, they have planned right now in the house side uh, a voting a voting meeting coming up what tuesday at 10 o'clock a.m on community solar uh, interestingly there is a meeting the day before uh, it's uh, another informational hearing about solar and economic development so i'm hoping to attend both of those and uh, again relay any uh any uh, key points out of there that that's relevant 
the the community solar is the one though that I'm I'm extremely excited about. The you know, I, I think most people on this call are aware that we're one of I think only six states that that don't enable we don't have the enabling uh, you know legislation and we don't have the the projects that other states have. Uh, the energy uh, alternative energy portfolio standards. Uh, th this is actually uh, an interesting and messy situation where there are multiple bills <laughs> proposed right now uh, dealing with alternative energy portfolio standards. Uh, our, our existing alternative energy portfolio standards are are out of date and haven't been updated since they've been uh, adopted. So right now the uh, attempt uh, I would say is to uh, increase the amount of renewable energy that we have in our standards. You know to to promote renewable energy in Pennsylvania. But that's all I'm going to say for that because we're going to get down to to that one next. Uh, the solar for schools uh, is another bill that. It looks like it's uh, uh, moving forward. You know, it, the one issue with it is, uh, if I interpret it correctly, it, it's not funded. But there is federal funding available uh, for that type of activity. So I'm, I'm still optimistic that that that's a good bill. Plus, once the bill, uh, if the bill is enacted, uh, it can always be funded. Uh, you know, during uh, another session, uh, so during another budget year. So having the bill, I, I, I would interpret that as, as being a, a win, even without it being funded maybe the first year or first two, who, who knows. And now here's the big news. Uh, for anybody that hasn't heard, the, the governor made a statement yesterday uh, about his plan to promote energy in Pennsylvania. And it's really two bills that... Uh, he makes the statement that it's it's basically a, a a win for labor and a win for the environment, and it keeps Pennsylvania competitive. So we have PACER, and that's the Pennsylvania Climate Emissions Reduction Initiative, but it's PACER, not PACERE. And what that is is basically a, a state level Regi program. So it's a cap trade and investment program run by the state and uh, it would be uh, operated through DEP 70% of any of the the revenue coming in from that goes to electricity bill rebates uh, then the 30% and when he gave his talk yesterday he didn't break down how this you know how the 30% is broken down but uh, large energy producing facilities in order to improve them, make them cleaner. Uh, low income households was a priority. And then promoting clean energy and renewable energy. Uh, now, until we see a bill and see the language of the bill, uh, uh, unfortunately, that there there's still a lot unknown. So uh, uh, speaking to, you know, to what impacts this may have, uh, uh, maybe our position on this uh, that that's that's a challenge right now because we won't know until we see a, a bill and, and read the language of that bill uh, the the second one uh, is uh, and this is why I skipped over the uh, alternative energy portfolio standards rather quickly is uh, the governor's uh, idea of uh, uh, improving the uh, renewable energy, the, uh, the alternative energy portfolio standards, basically re replacing them with PRESS, the Pennsylvania Reliable Energy Sustainability Standard. And what that would do is increase the amount that is uh, required for clean energy. So it would be 35% clean energy by 2035, and that would be what, what's considered tier one. Uh, but again, in his talk yesterday, um, didn't identify specifically what tier one is. Now we have some ideas what tier one might be, but until we see it in a bill, uh, all we know is clean energy. Now he did mention though, for the 10% other clean energy is uh, hydro. And then the uh, the carbon capture uh, was uh, was mentioned. 
So some of the, uh, we'll say uh, other, uh, maybe we're not, you know, not, not, uh, not solar and not wind, but still some other options that are tier two, 10%. And then five, five was, uh, I, I think probably the most vague with, uh, 5% other, uh, for tier three. So I'm looking forward to seeing a bill that way I can, I can, uh, read and actually define uh, what falls in each one of these tiers. Uh, so that way, uh, one, you know, it, it's good to be informed. And then two, it, it really, uh, uh, it makes it easier to express, uh, you know, support for uh, either a bill or components of the bill, if, if, if that's the desire. Uh, but right now, uh, everything is still uh, pretty vague, a lot of unknowns, uh, but I, I'm I'm assuming this is where, if anywhere through this that we get questions, uh, it'll probably be here. So I would like to just pause and and see are are there any questions, and if there are, uh, is there a hand raise feature on this? I don't, or 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 just un unmute and <laughs> and ask your question, I guess. Nate, the hand raise is under reactions. Um, so if you click reactions, you'll see the hand raise feature. Oh, and I missed you at the beginning. I uh, So I apologize when we went through introductions. No that, worries. Um, that, that, Rachel, that's Rachel Rosenfeld, online <laughs> organizer for the PA chapter. Sorry, I joined late, everyone, but um, glad to be here. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Okay, I do see a raised hand. Uh, uh, Robin, uh, go ahead. Hi, Nate. Well, thank you for that. Uh, I guess on the on the renewable energy standard. Um, so, I mean, what you're saying is he could completely redefine those three tiers. Uh, I mean, my reaction at first was about how it seemed to be just, um, you know, boosting the potential for waste incineration and and um, coal waste burning and that kind of stuff without a specific commitment to solar. But um, you're, you're saying that, I mean, he could just rewrite those three definitions with this new legislation. He, he could, <laughs> that's uh, we're, we're hoping that uh, any changes that are made, well, at least this is my, my hope is that it, it would be an improvement from the alternative energy portfolio standards. But anytime changes are made, you, you never really know what you're going to get. And even though this this was the governor's uh, idea came out of his, you know, the, the governor's office, uh, it's going to have to have a, a bill sponsor uh, introduce it. So it'll go through the legislative process. Uh, and I, I, I think, uh, uh, and well, I would be surprised if there, uh, you know, most bills that get introduced go through uh, uh, amending uh, procedures uh, as it as it goes through, you know, committee, then the general assembly, and then to the other side, and you know, so uh, I do anticipate, uh, we'll say, uh, some changes even when the bill is uh, is available to read, yeah. Uh, but yeah, right right now he he can uh, uh or i should say the prime sponsor that's selected uh could put in the bill you know could could change what what's in those tiers uh, but he did emphasize that the 35% was clean energy now everybody has a different definition of clean energy though which is the 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 challenging thing the other uh, he did mention the the methane digesters uh and the uh, small nuclear uh reactors the small modular uh, nuclear as, as being uh, a, an, an eligible uh, use. Uh, the other uh, thing that oh. he, he mentioned uh, uh, that I, I think is uh, pretty important, and it, it may be an upcoming question, but uh, somebody asked him about if, if Reggie were to be deemed allowable you know, but by the courts, uh, what impact would this have? And uh, oh, that—that's back. Never mind. That's back to the 
<laughs> the pacer. I'm I'm getting a little bit confused here, uh, but I may as well continue with that trying to line of thought, and then I'll get to the because uh, I, I see another uh, question. Uh, if if pacer were to pass, uh, it would uh, el basically el eliminate the the drive uh, to join Reggie, but it would not eliminate all of the. Uh, that there there were some details that were mentioned. I don't 100% understand them yet, so I'm going to have to get clarification. But it sounds like Pennsylvania could still interact potentially uh, with other Reggie states uh, and with Reggie, but we would be running our own uh, program. But okay, now I've talked enough. Uh, let's hear another and, question. Indeed, I, I just wanted to add to that uh, response is, and I think in the Inquirer article, it said that they expected to see a co-sponsor memo in the next couple of days. So we should see some, uh, maybe that language, but at least some more details then. Yeah, I, I hope so. And I, I see uh, Barbara, you have a hand raised. I, I, I hate to, to say this, but I mean, are we, are we still talking about carbon capture and storage as being in any way, shape, or form, a viable solution for anything? It's pretty sad. Well, when you say we, I I, I think uh, Sierra, Club Sierra Club has yeah, has, has a policy, uh, but uh, anybody with uh, a brain? Yeah, that that is still uh, that that is still an option being discussed when it comes to. Uh, uh, at least to to this bill uh, when when he made his announcement yesterday 35 percent and clean energy by 2035 that's I, I you know it's like we have unlimited amount of time to just do whatever we don't have that time anymore it doesn't we're already we're already past the tipping point this year has been a perfect example it's it's we need we need a hundred percent today tomorrow not well well, well hopefully uh, the, the 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 administration uh will encourage uh more work in the future because that that is the other thing that uh was stressed yesterday was this is just the start and we're we're going to continue when i say we i mean pennsylvania but uh, he mentioned continuing, you know, to collaborate and improve and, and continue to get feedback from, uh, you know, both the, the labor and the environmental uh, yeah, groups. Yeah, not looking to improve anything except his purse. And All right. Uh, oh, Jim, you raised a hand. Yeah, I had a question. I wondered if you had any insight or any expectations for for the for the Reggie lookalike thing, um, you talked about where the proceeds would go, but what is the cap? What is the fee that's going to be charged per you know gram of carbon dioxide emissions or or whatever? And is there any expectation that'll be competitive with our, our neighboring states? That that is one of the challenges that we don't know. So uh, again, hoping, well, and that may even, a lot of times when bills come out, what they will do, because since DEP would run that program, uh, the bill may not specify that. Uh, what the bill may do is it may be an enabling bill rather than a prescriptive bill and direct DEP to develop uh, rules and with with their rule development, they may define that. Uh, if if it's put in the bill, it you know it, it's prescriptive and we'll know right away. Uh, if not, uh, that that'll that'll be further down the road before we we know anything like that. But it would also provide an opportunity to provide input. So uh, pretty much, and anything I look at as a challenge, I also look at as an opportunity uh, to to try to at least have our voices heard. So, I don't see any more hands, so we may might be able to move on to the, the next slide. Uh, Nate, there was something in the chat from Brian. Oh, okay. About uh, on pump storage plant along the Susquehanna, wondering if that would be a, 
a uh, a clean energy that would might get credits. Uh, that that might. Uh, we're going to have to wait to to see the language. I I do know. Uh, I I've heard a lot of of talk. Uh, from multiple, you know, and not, well, we'll say, I, I have a lot of conversations involving, you know, the uh, labor uh, sector and the environmental sector and, and state, you know, uh, players. Uh, one thing, one idea that I've heard, and I've heard it a couple of times, so it makes me think, okay, this isn't just an idea that came up and is, is gone. It might actually, uh, you know, uh, have a little bit of momentum is the idea of, retrofitting uh old existing dams that are are not producing hydro in order to uh to get the hydro power uh, the the actual build out of of new dams is is rather uh the opportunities are rather limited so uh, uh and that there are a lot of uh you know it's uh it's a balancing act, you know, when it comes to the the impacts of of a lot of that infrastructure. So, uh, the idea, though, of using existing dams and uh, and adding hydropower to those, uh, I think that's an interesting concept. We'll just have to see how that plays out. But all right, are there any? I, I just opened up the chat, so I, I don't know if there's any other questions that that I can answer right now. I, I think that's it. Okay. All right. Well, then uh, I, I think we can move on to the next slide then. All right. And this is where we are hoping uh, – oh, I, I did just see, yeah, the, the – the regulatory process can take two years plus. Uh, it can be fast tracked. Uh, it they uh, it it depends on uh, on the the rulemaking, but it can take two years plus. It it, it can it can take a, a shorter amount of time. Yeah, uh, they they don't. They've almost never chosen to do that. In the twenty six years I was in OCTAC, we maybe fast tracked something once in twenty six years. So, right. Uh, if Don't if it's expect. the governor's if it's the governor's plan, uh, he he may have a little influence <laughs> if if the bills were to, to pass. But uh, all right, and this is where I I think everybody that's on this call right now is your opportunity to basically define uh, what you want to see more of. Because right now, I looked at this as being it's an introduction to this call in general. So I, I went over some just very basic introductory topics. Uh, uh, Kelsey uh, went over the, uh, we'll say the the dirty energy stuff. So I, I just wanted to make sure that uh, people had an opportunity to to uh, voice their opinion of uh, what, what do you want to see? You know, like uh, we can have guest speakers. Uh, well, and I guess all of those are different types of guest speakers. So <laughs> So we we could have a variety of different types of guest speakers uh, depending on their availability. But uh, go ahead, Howard. I, I see you got your hand raised. Um, yeah, um, I just wanted to share this. Um, in our Delaware County team, what we've been doing is uh, featuring an action item of the month, generally a piece of legislation. Um, and we have somebody with expertise uh, present it, we discuss it, and we encourage everybody to write their elected representatives to uh, support it. Uh, and we were fortunate enough to get um, a state representative to present the bill that she's the primary co-sponsor of um, uh, in one month regarding uh, uh, improved uh, recycling of electronic waste. And then last month, we were able to get two state senators, one of whom was the primary co-sponsor of the Senate version of that bill. So we've managed a connection between us and uh, at least a couple of the, po a few of the politicians who are uh, inclined to be pro-environmentalists. And I would recommend that we all do that in the state 
if we all did action item of the month or action items of the of this quarter, um, I think we would get a lot more um, attention from uh, the state's elected officials. So I just wanted to share that. Well, well thank you, because that actually, uh, I've been exploring ways of trying to uh, spread the community advocate program efforts statewide. And and I think that's an opportunity to to basically do the same thing, but with, you know, bills that we're in favor of and other topics. So th thank you for that input there. You're welcome. Yeah, I think guest speakers are, are a good idea. Um, if, if, you know, if we have uh, nominations from the academic community, often, often uh, an academic a uh, speaker might have more of a, um, you know, unspun message to tell. Um, that's not always the case, but uh, yeah, I think that would be that would be interesting. All right, and I did just uh, do a time check, and we have fifteen minutes. And I know that sure. there are a few other uh, slides that may take some time. So, really quickly, just want to uplift in the chat. From Karen, it would be good to hear from state legislatures who are supporting green energy and also hear from state agencies. All right, great. Thank you. And I I, I was just going to mention, because like that, uh, so if if you do have an idea, uh, throw it in the chat. That way, uh, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that the chat gets recorded along with the uh, the call when, when you record the call. So we'll have access to the chat that we'll be able to go back through and uh, receive those uh, suggestions. But for now, how about, yeah. Uh, and this, I get to quit talking again, and uh, we'll have some, uh, some brief summaries from the individual teams. All right. Thanks, Nate. I am going to... Um cover for Bill here. Bill is traveling. So uh, Bill Sabe is the, um, the one of the facilitators for the, the clean energy team. So uh, real, uh, and I'll try to do this quickly. Um, so here's some of the big topics that the clean energy team has been uh, talking about recently. Uh, Reggie joining this regional initiative for cap and invest program for carbon dioxide emissions at power plants would be a major step forward for Pennsylvania, but it's been a hurry up and wait process with court rulings, uh, the governor's appeal and endless Pennsylvania Senate attempts to kill Reggie. Uh, yesterday, Governor Shapiro announced PACER, a PA only version of Reggie. Uh, community solar, uh, every year is the year, um, it seems like that community solar will pass in PA. We're told that it has bipartisan support, but it seems it has been a, a bargaining chip tied up with other clean and not so clean energy proposals. Uh, upping the APS, uh, they talked about um, every environmental and clean energy advocate uh, report seems to reference the APS as a key to greening the grid in Pennsylvania. Uh, the clean energy team is monitoring language and proposed comments of the three tiers, which Governor Shapiro announced yesterday, called Press Pennsylvania, uh, reliable energy sustainability standard. Uh, solar for schools also, Nate mentioned, another bill that seems to have support on both sides of the aisle and funding from the federal IRA, uh, but can't seem to advance to a vote. Uh, we have uh, been sharing info about solar for schools and, and counting on it becoming real this year. Um, webinars, the clean energy team has hosted a couple of webinars in 2023 virtual net metering and hydrothermal carbonization. Uh, the clean clean advocates team has talked about in this uh, venue, uh, the, the clean uh, community advocates for clean energy in greater Philadelphia reports progress on this team. Um, its focus is to engaging with local sta stakeholders uh, to make sure that they are ready to take advantage of federal and Pennsylvania funding for clean energy projects. Uh, and community choice aggregation, CCA for boroughs, is about to submit a request for a declaratory ruling to the PAC. So stay tuned about that. Um, next, I'm going to talk about uh, the Dirty Energy Team. Um, 
So here's some of the bigger talk topics that we've kicked around the Dirty Energy team uh, during our meetings and posts on the Google group. We also have a lot of discussion uh, on our, um, oh, Bill wants to get back in. Um, hydrogen, there are so many questions around hydrogen. I, I wanted to ask you, Nate, if, if that was something you felt like was on the um, staff's list or not. Um, I certainly, certainly believe that it's something that volunteers can contribute to. Uh, can it play a role in sectors that are hard to decarbonize? Can it be done in a zero or near carbon, a zero carbon process? Is the fossil fuel industry scamming us into thinking that green hydrogen is their ultimate goal when really they are planning to drill baby drill? Um, fugitive methane uh, covers a, a range of bad things from abandoned gas wells uh, that Kelsey talked about, um, but also uh, leaks in transmission and distribution pipelines, compressor stations, appliances, and industrial operations. And then there are the agricultural and landfill sources of atmospheric methane. Uh, LNG, even though Biden has put a pause on LNG export projects, there are still uh, existing facilities to worry about and projects that are in the pipe with the, uh, with the fossil fuel industry is talking about uh, being exempt from the pause. Um, the APS, the, the Dirty Energy Team, can review and discuss aspects of the proposals for updating the EAPS that touch on non-renewable and certainly not clean energy. Like Thank you. Passengers, appreciate all of your personal belongings. For your safety. Let me mute Bill here. Oh, there you go. Um, Reggie. Uh, the, the Dirty Energy Team's focus on Reggie is to talk about how the carbon emissions fees are affecting or would be uh, fossil fuel based power plants. Uh, do we think it, it, it will be effective? Are the, are the poor air quality impacted communities really being helped? Um, and then, oh, I also wanted to bring up here, um, I invited Bill Half. I was hoping Bill Half would, would join us tonight. I invited Bill Half to, to join these two email lists, uh, these two teams. Uh, to try to spur some some uh, discussion about various topics. Um, I know he's a very prolific uh, emailer, so I, I would uh, appreciate some feedback on whether you guys think he's sending too much or if he's uh, going off on the on the wrong uh, wrong line there. So uh, give me some feedback about that. Um, and then finally, the transportation team. Um, EV market trends, Fred, an unapologetic advocate of all things Tesla, uh, has kept us up to date about the EV market in general and Tesla's dominance in EV sales and the charging infrastructure. Uh, vehicle emissions, we have we had a presentation from Zach Favish, uh, Sierra Club legal team. Uh, uh, he led the talk about an opportunity for PA to join the California vehicle rules version two. Uh, the clean truck rule, uh, Max Turner, team a team member and campaign organizer with uh, Electrification Coalition, asked us to share a petition in support of the EPA's clean truck rule uh, with our mayors. Um, bus fleets and trains, Nate has kept us informed about uh, resources for electrifying bus fleet, fleets, including schools and public transit. And last fall, we hosted a webinar about using battery electric pop-up trains to expand regional rail service. Um, and EV ready ordinances. Uh, we sometimes talk about uh, things like our local governments that our local government, governments can do to help enable and accelerate the electrification of vehicles. There are now uh, three communities in Pennsylvania that have passed EV ready ordinances for new construction. Uh, and then we had a discussion about tax credits. Uh, we try to untangle the fine print about which cars qualify and who is eligible to take cre tax credits for EVs and chargers. And that's the end of my discussion. I don't know if you want to pause for questions or, or keep moving here. We have eight minutes. So uh, uh, I think uh, we'll, we'll keep moving. Uh, okay. Uh, one thing I, uh, sometimes it takes me a, a, a while to, uh, to realize uh, maybe uh, uh, some of the messaging that that I'm sending might might not be, uh, uh, we'll say, reflective of what I'm what it's, uh, the intent is. Uh, so I, I do have to go back and, and just mention that 
when I identified uh, like the work that I'm doing and Kelsey identified the work that she's doing. And well, when I pointed out the gaps, well, one reason I pointed those out is, is because those are areas where uh, I unfortunately won't be able to engage. So I would say that makes opportunities for uh, everybody on this call to engage uh, critical. Uh, but that doesn't mean uh, that the areas where we are working are not opportunities uh, uh, to engage and and to uh, to be active. So uh, uh, if I if I sounded that way, I, I didn't uh, intend to sound that way. I, uh, so uh, even the pro programs that are a priority uh, to me are are opportunities. Uh, so uh, the the first one is the uh, uh, right here for the opportunities to volunteer and and hopefully. Uh, these are the, we'll say, the more well-defined ones. The the Community Advocates Program, uh, my intent is to have uh, a school district of, of approach uh, and like a toolkit so that way everybody lives in a school district. They, they can have materials on hand, uh, write letters or send a form letter and put their name you know, on, on uh, to school districts to and, and there's a lot of programs. Uh, I know the electric school bus is uh, the popular one, uh, but there's also uh, other opportunities for, uh, you know, indoor air, and uh, there's a lot of tax credits. DEP has a, a electrified kitchen program that school districts are eligible for. Uh, so putting out all that together, packaging it up in a, uh, in a friendly manner to be able to engage school districts, I, I think is going to be... Uh, uh, well, that that is a priority of mine, and then the DEP Home Energy Rebates Program. Uh, as soon as I find out, they said spring is when they're hoping to engage uh, with with the the stakeholder outreach. Unfortunately, spring is a pretty vague term, and they delayed a little bit already on what they were hoping when it comes to uh, their application time frame. So I I I think that they're uh, plans for community engagement probably also was uh, delayed a little bit. That's that's my speculation, but uh, uh, it looks like uh, the the timeline may have shifted a little bit. Uh, and there, there's there's plenty of opportunities, but those are the ones that I wanted to highlight because they're they're front burner for me. And I'm sure uh, uh, Kelsey, I I I, I should have. Uh, should have made sure that that you knew to to go ahead and add stuff to here if if you had any specific ideas for uh, opportunities to volunteer uh, with uh, with the work that you're involved in also. Yeah, apologies, I missed this in the in the setup of that, but no worries. I can at least share it here that still, um, if any folks would be willing to write a letter to the editor regarding the LNG facilities in favor of the pause, that would be um, one volunteer opportunity I could see if folks were interested. And another one would be that the hazardous fracking waste issue is across the whole entire state and into multiple other states, and we'll be doing some more work on that. So if that's a topic that interests you, whether that's through landfills or through how that stuff is trucked across the state or in general, just how it's not labeled as hazardous waste. And that's a huge um, um, miss, a huge issue that we'll be, we'll be working on um, or are working on, I apologize. Um, if that is something that interests you to continue doing some work on, I would love to connect. So my email was in that previous slide. All right. Thank you. And I, I guess with that, I think we should be ready for the next slide. And we're getting close to the end. Oh, Jim, this is you. Uh, this is me. So um, I think you've seen this. You may have seen this before in a blog post that, I, that I've shared. Um, there's been some uh, requests to uh, maybe start up a couple of new uh, conservation teams. In addition to the eight that we have, uh, one on climate education. Um, that, uh, you know, just focuses on, um, you know, the science, the, the changing science and reports, and, uh, and especially bringing it home to Pennsylvania. So, um, I don't know, I'll ask, is anybody in this room interested in, you know, being a part of uh, a, a climate education uh, team for that's a statewide team, and um, anybody interested in helping to facilitate uh, those team meetings, um, you know? Raise your hand or put something in the chat or send me an email. 
Um, yep, I got you, Tim. I knew you'd be at the top of the list. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and the other one is sustainable development. I mean, I, I hear stories all the time about big projects, big industrial or big uh, um, even residential uh, projects going on in Pennsylvania and local people don't know what to do about it. Usually the time they hear about it, it's already been approved. It's already uh, along the ways. But I think there's an opportunity to develop um, some resources for uh, local volunteers to you know, and engage with their um, local governments and and just to make sure their decision makers have all the facts um, in, in terms of, uh, um, you know, getting approvals for the big and they make sure they're not getting so, snowed by the big, uh, big companies. All right, so that's another one. If anybody's interested in, in joining this team, um, and especially uh, helping to facilitate. We'll start that up. Um, actually, right. Nate, before you do this, let me let me jump into this picture as long as I'm, I'm talking. So you can see all the kind of, this is the calendar, the map of, of uh, all the uh, energy related, climate and energy related uh, team meetings. Um, and you see the, the quarterly meetings interspersed that Nate, Nate will be running. Um, so, and, and I'll share this, I'll share this uh, deck with everybody, um, but we need to figure out how to filter in uh, the climate education teams, how, how often they would, how often they would meet. Yeah, I see you, Rachel's, Rachel's daughter. Um, and, uh, and I, I would want them to compete with you know, the, the other teams, but uh, um, this is kind of the big picture. All right, I'll go back. Go ahead, Nate. I, 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 was, uh, I was going to say, I think we can gloss over this because we're going to use the, uh, the feedback that we received and uh, I'm hoping to, to get a planning meeting. So here's a spoiler, uh, uh, Jim, Bill and Kelsey uh, uh, hoping to get a, a planning meeting coming up where uh, we can discuss uh, and especially uh, Kelsey, I have to uh, thank you. Uh, when, when I volunteered for this, I, I didn't realize at the time uh, how uh, it's you, you're, you're included also. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you. Uh, but with that, we are, we are at time. We're over by a minute. Uh, and uh, I, I can say more details will come. And uh, I just wanted to uh, thank everybody. And thanks for bearing uh, with me through this uh, introduction. I, I know it's a little bit rough first call, uh, but thanks. And keep in mind, uh, my goal is for every next call is going to be better than the previous one. <laughs> so so the next quarterly meeting is June 13th. You can you know pencil that in on your calendars, right? Yep, that's correct. All right. Well, I don't I don't see anything else. So how about everybody have a wonderful evening?